Hi, I'm Pamela Poole, and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. Today's amazing because I am going to do another episode of the Inspired Art Appreciation Series. This one is about Howard Pyle, and I've been promising this one for a couple of weeks now as we looked at American illustrators um, Norman Rockwell. Last week we did N.C. Wyeth, and today we are looking at Howard Pyle, who was N.C. Wyeth's instructor, and Norman Rockwell once said in 1945 to New Yorker Magazine in an interview that if given a choice between being given an original Rembrandt, Rembrandt masterpiece or a good Howard Pyle painting, he would take the Howard Pyle every time. So if that gives you a little bit of the esteem of some of the people living in um, those times contemporary to him, uh, also uh, uh, artist, Vincent Van Gogh was very impressed and captivated by Howard Pyle's drawings. So with that, I'll give you some introduction to who Howard Pyle is. Howard Pyle, if you want to check into images as we go along with this, pull up my Pinterest board at Pamela Pool Art, look for Howard Pyle, the board with that on it, and you'll see a lot of um, examples of paintings that he did, or book illustrations, book covers, um, because he did things like The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, The King Arthur Tales, and other things. Uh, we're going to talk about his pirate book today, and how he influenced the look of Johnny Depp and others in Pirates of the Caribbean. So if you, will, you want to look into that while I give you some more information about Howard Pyle, he is the king of the golden age of American illustration here in America. That was between 1880 and roughly the end of World War I, which would be about 1920. And um, although he had passed away, by the time the era ended, he is still considered the undisputed king of the illustration. And he was also an art teacher he not only wrote and authored books, but he was also a teacher of what became known as the Brandywine School. And that is where artists such as N.C. Wyeth and many others, some of them female, um, that, which was not common at that time, they became very well known after studying under Howard Pyle. And what I thought was really fun, uh, one of the things that he was often heard to say in class is, throw your heart in the painting and then dive in after it. And as if you listened to my um, presentation last week about N.C. Wyeth, you know that he really took that to heart. And it was the key to his success for how much emotion he could bring to a painting because he imagined himself. He had all the props and he took trips to study the backgrounds and settings of the stories and um, even envisioned himself as the character so that he could really get into portraying that character in the painting in the best way that would be most, um, most likely to affect the viewers and readers if he was illustrating a book. He illustrated 112 books. So now I'm gonna get to a few things about Howard Pyle and I happen to have the Book of Pirates and in this book, I know some of you probably think, why would a book of pirates be a good book about virtues? Because Howard Pyle was all about writing stories that were virtuous. The stories that he loved growing up with chivalry and knights and honor and justice, especially for those who could not take care of themselves, for someone else to be their champion. Um, he, he liked to have pictures and stories that were about heroism of some type. And when I say that, I'm not talking about superheroes like Marvel Comics or something like that. I'm talking about real heroes that we used to encounter in classic stories. Um, not the ones that we could bring down to be worse than us, but they happened to save us that day or something. These were people who really had to overcome um, being embattled and overcome things that were very hard, but the goal meant more to them than what they had to suffer to overcome. And so his heroes are a lot different from the ones we have today. And uh, that was what 
when I told you last week and the week before with Norman Rockwell, um, how he and N.C. Wyeth were appealing to an audience that had a foundation in Judeo-Christian values of right and wrong, um, morals about justice and traditions and um, that sort of thing, Gold, the golden rule. Um, that was something that Howard Pyle was doing too. He was trying to appeal to that audience. Now, the, in the Book of Pirates here, we do have we do encounter some things that would be scary for youth. Remember, his audience is mostly youth. In fact, the stories of Robin Hood and King Arthur and a lot of his books, he rewrote from oral traditions and things like that to make them suitable for youth to really instill the moral virtues. In this, we have walking the plank, which is kind of a scary thing, but which um, youth would of that time would really thrill to think, okay, how is he going to get out of this? And hopefully there was a happy ending. I think Pyle would have made sure of that. This is the painting that he did for the book cover. Remember I told you about the art trick that he and N.C. Wyeth used very well, and that's what I call still space, um, so that the subject is emotionally impactful. Well, that's what he did with this. And as you saw, that was able to be adapted because there was so much still space around it that they were able to put titles and words and things around that painting. Now, um, whenever he was writing these stories for you, um, any of you who have been a, a writer or an author, um, a artist, you know that references are a big part of what we do. And at the time that he was researching things about pirates so that he could write these youth stories, there wasn't a record of what pirates look like or how they would dress on board ship or if they put on something different to go out and fight when they were capturing a galleon or something. And so he made some of it up. He went by other historical ways that people dressed. He based a lot of it on the adventurous gypsy look um, with the flowing uh, fabrics and things like that, the headbands, scarves, uh, beads and jewelry and that sort of thing. So um, if you, you know, want to know for sure if that's what a pirate looks like, um, that is not the case. A lot of that is in part uh, his imagination and it carried so strongly, it was so popular, carried over into things that we have today in the Pirates of the Caribbean stories or back in the 50s and everything when we did um, Errol Flynn movies, uh, the swashbuckling, a uh, privateer, maybe, that had to rescue the girl and bring justice to um, her or her family over someone who was trying to rob them or cheat them out of their inheritance and that sort of thing. Those are the kinds of stories that he liked to use as a teaching vehicle to instill virtues, even though the story itself might have had bad people in it. He compared the evil to the good to show which one was really the one that was worth embracing. Another thing that I like about um, Howard Pyle, I have this book, The Wonder Clock, and this is a set of 24 fairy tales that he wrote, and his, his daughter wrote a poem at the beginning of each one. There's one for every hour of the day. That's why it's The Wonder Clock. It's about going around the clock 24 hours. This is an example of one of the illustrations that he did for it, very detailed. And this is the princess finding her prince. And that's a very fairy tale type thing, isn't it? Happy endings. And so he liked to do these sorts of stories to help um, youth learn uh, values that they hoped would be the bedrock of America and how people should treat one another. Now, these are mostly Judeo-Christian values, as I mentioned before. They are based on biblical teachings of Jesus and um, the, in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments and other things that the Lord taught um, the Israelites and others. But um, since a lot of my audience is Christian and homeschoolers maybe who are wondering um, how to write up an essay or something on these um, artists and, and authors, and they may wonder if that that aspect of their work and their their seeming heart for the type of virtuous work that they were 
um, presenting, for, especially for youth, if that meant that that was their heart about their beliefs. And I can't say that. I tried to find that out with the references available to me, and I can't find a record of a testimony that would say that they um, were Christian or um, that they left a testimony to help other people follow that tradition or that belief system. And so um, what I would recommend is for those of us that have the Christian faith, I think that we should be um, diligent and intentional about leaving a record behind of our testimony so that if someone ever wrote about us someday or if our um, grandchildren and great-grandchildren wondered about what we believed, then they could find that record because it would be written somewhere or it would be passed down and there would be no question about the kind of faith that we had and what we valued in life, what um, our authority, source of authority was for our beliefs, and just leave a trail for that so that we have a testimony to leave behind, whereas I couldn't find one in some of these settings. And that's all I have for you today. I hope that you will go out, make the world a better place, use your art and creative talents for good, and that um, you'll join me next time whenever we get back. I'm hoping to do something about the Impressionists and maybe a focus on Vincent van Gogh when we come back next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.